Thank you for coming very much, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Um, I'm Chris Mitchell. Uh, I'm the principal of ESA. Uh, I, I genuinely have like the best job ever. Um, so I'm delighted to. Th I, I, I'm, I'm not going to apologise for slightly overselling the place because uh, I believe in it very, very much. It's pure passion. I'm not here to sell, but I just love it. Um, the truth is, I don't believe in perfection. We're not a perfect school. I don't think such a thing exists. But we are up to something. When we get it right, it's wicked. When we get it wrong, it's still okay. Um, and uh, if, it's, if it connects with what you're about and what makes you sort of excited to get out of bed, then this is definitely the school for you. There are some ways in which we're a very ordinary, normal school, although it won't feel like it tonight when we're sort of putting all our best stuff in the shop window. Uh, but there are some ways in which we're a normal place and some ways where we're really, really different. The purpose of this talk right now is to hopefully, in 25 minutes, show you some of the ways in which we are the same and a lot of the ways in which we're different so that you know what you're basically getting into if you, if you do want to come here. So, let's, uh, let's dive forward. So the first thing is this. Sorry. Oh no, don't worry. Let me just uh, attempt to quickly stop it. While we... No, no, I've gone with this one. Um, there is a second showreel that we literally... Yeah, it's showing downstairs on the big screen. We literally wrapped, like, we finished it today. Um, which is the 2022 one. This, is, this show really is showing you pretty much most of what we achieved in last academic year. So it's a bit, a bit more. Right. No? That hasn't worked. Let's try again. Okay. It's good. So that's what we were set up to do. 
Now that's why we are a bit different. I'm going to come on to what some of those differences are now. But that's fundamentally what we've set up for. It's a big part of our vision. The show really is supposed to encapsulate that. We firmly believe that your learning is enriched and becomes better and more effective if you are doing learning through what you love. Okay? Now please understand, I know we are a media arts school and we're all into performance and production and all of that stuff, but this is not a place where if you come here, come on in, sorry, no problem, um, this isn't a school where you're just going to watch TV all day. Okay? You probably will get to consume media arts here a little bit more than you might in some other schools, but it is a very robust and rigorous learning environment. Okay? And I'm going to explain the ways in which it is as we go forward. But even though we go incredibly hard after English, Maths and Science here in Year 10 and 11, and we've got a great suite of A-levels which are highly academically challenging if you're coming into Year 12, all of that is done through the gateway of aesthetic arts. Okay? So if that's what you're into, this will work. Okay? And we've got some great evidence of it working that I'm going to share with you in a moment. If you are absolutely in love with geology, uh, archaeology, pharmaceuticals, uh, you know, health futures, we love you, we need you, planet Earth needs you, but this probably isn't the school for you. Okay? Um, and there are plenty, plenty schools where they'll specialise in that stuff, including a lot of high quality UTCs that do it. We're here particularly for all that stuff that sits behind film, TV and theatre. Now because we believe in this idea of being in your element, that if you're doing what you love, if you love learning, then the magic happens, because that's what we're all about, it's really important to us that you've got a real clear understanding of the specialism and what that really means, and that that's what you're coming for. Okay. Um, next is to talk to you a little bit about our curriculum. We call it our split screen curriculum. Okay, uh, We're trying to do two things here, because although the skills and the technical competencies matter enormously to the industry, what actually matters more is the type of person you are, and the type of person you become. Do you do what you said you were going to do? Do you do it on time? Are you reliable? Are you trustworthy? Are you honest? Okay. Uh, do you work well with other people? Do you communicate clearly? Are you creatively confident so that you really put yourself out there bravely with your ideas? Do you commit to your craft? Okay? These seven C's that we put here about being confident, curious, collaborative, creative, committed, compassionate, communicators and craftspeople, that stuff probably matters more than the grades you get. All right? But grades matter too, which is why we call that split screen curriculum. So we put a lot of emphasis on this stuff, but we also have subjects and specifications which you take and we drive you and challenge you and if necessary nag you to make sure that you get great outcomes just like all schools do for their students. I'm going to focus now on the content curriculum though because in many ways that's what you're coming here for, it's for the subjects you choose. So quick little wave at me if you're currently in year 9 thinking about year 10. Oh good, more of you this, there's only two of them in the last. Good, thank you. And how many of you are currently in year 11 thinking about coming into year 12? Okay, about 30%. Fine. And are there any of you currently in year 13 thinking about year 14? Not in this room. Okay, fine. So, if you are currently in year 11, don't switch off completely, but this bit's not going to be primarily relevant to you. If you're currently in year 9, pay really close attention here. Okay. What is one of the ways in which we are a normal school? Okay, it's this. We go hard after English, Maths and Science, right? Every single student studies English, Maths and Science. In fact, you'll study all three of them every day. You do five hours of English, five hours of Maths and five hours of Science every day. So please don't think that by coming here, you're escaping the national curriculum. You are not, we love it, we do it well, okay? Like I said, we make it juicy because you get to study that stuff through the gateway of the creative arts. So we make it really valuable and meaningful, but you are going to do English, Maths and Science every day. Here's where we're different. Most schools are judged according to something called the Progress 8 Indicator. Don't switch off. I know it's boring, but it's important you understand, particularly mums and dads. The Progress 8 Indicator is the way in which schools are ranked into league tables. It's the way in which schools are judged by not not so much Ofsted anymore, but certainly by the Department for Education very often. Um, and when you go onto that kind of get information about schools website, if any of you are into that, and you start clicking on ranking schools alongside each other, they're generally being ranked according to Progress 8. Here's the problem with Progress 8. 
Progress 8 is ideological. Okay? The people that have created Progress 8 have made decisions that some subjects should count and are more important than others. So, for example, English, Maths and Science, which we agree with, are double-weighted, but also Geography, History, Computer Science, Modern Foreign Languages count more in Progress 8 than other subjects. And some subjects, like hair and makeup, don't count at all. Uh, other subjects, like if you take Art and Photography, they'll only let you count one of them because they consider them both Art. Okay? So, when you are a normal mainstream school, Generally speaking, when you're in year nine and they give you your options, they will say, you do English, Maths and Science, and then for option one, we want you to do either History or Geography, uh, you know, or, or Humanities. Option two, often a modern foreign language. Option three, maybe a Technical or Computer Science. And by the time you get to your fourth option, you're usually having to choose between Drama, Music, or Art, but you can't do Drama, Music, and Art. Now, some schools are really clever and they don't make it quite as simple as that. And they try and make sure you can do two arts or two. Some, some schools really lean into the arts. But generally speaking, because schools are judged by the breadth of their curriculum, that means how many options they're able to give you, uh, there are limitations if you are just a straight out, I love the arts person. You can sometimes find it difficult to find a curriculum that really switches you on. We don't play Progress 8. So, the good news of not playing Progress 8 is once you've got your English, Maths and Science into your timetable, you can choose from across the suite of all these other subjects. So you could do English, Maths and Science with costume, with media production, with photography, with art and design. So you can do four subjects of real rich arts-based magic. Okay? That's what's cool. What's not cool is if you're going to judge how good this school is by where we rank in the league tables, we're really proud to be in the bottom third. Uh, so, um, that's the downside. But that's not what we're here for, we're not here to play those games, we're here to do this one. You can see here what we've done is we've grouped our curriculum around what we call the pipelines. So that if you are interested in coming here, you can see what kind of jobs sit in each pipeline and what kind of subjects lead to what kind of opportunities. All right? So again, you can see that link to career and professional creative industry, employment uh, and freelance. Is a big part of what we do. So these are the subjects that you can take. Okay. Year 11 switched back on. When you come into year 12, uh, there isn't any restriction on your curriculum, so it's 100% creative arts. Um, you can see that we have made a deliberate decision to keep things like A level um, English literature, we run, we've still got A level maths, uh, we do have forensic science, so that students can choose to stick with a science or a technology or a math based subject alongside their creative pursuits. But we do kind of have an expectation. I wouldn't have a massive problem if someone wanted to come here and do forensic science, English and A level. Uh, maths, if they wanted to do maths, English and science as A levels, I wouldn't have a problem. Uh, we offer them and you're welcome to come and choose them. But there would be a bit of me that thinks, and why, why here? Okay? So what these are designed to do uh, and so let me quickly give you the code. If it says AL, it's an A-level, and so it's worth one level. It's five hours a week that you will study that subject in college, and then we expect you to do between three and five hours a week of independent extra study. Okay? So A-level means uh, it's an A-level. We generally all know what those are. If it says level three, it might not be an A-level, but it's worth the equivalent of an A-level. Okay, it's a level three qualification, but it might be something like a BTEC or an RSL, um, or it might be a tech award or something like that, but it's worth the equivalent of one A. The ones I want to draw your attention to quickly are the UALs. UALs are big qualifications. You study them for 10 hours a week, and they're worth three A's. Okay? Um, they're really, really exciting courses, and they're 100% coursework and production, so there's no exam unit. So they're very technical, hands-on, and they're very industry-related. So, what we like to do here is we say you have to do 15 hours a week, otherwise you don't qualify as a full-time student. So you have to do at least 15 hours a week, which means if you did a UAL, for example, in set and prop design, you might want to do that alongside something like A-level photography or level 3 dance. So you mix the subjects to make sure that you are doing the equivalent of 15 hours a week. But what's really cool about that is you do 15 hours a week with a UAL and an A-level, and you'll actually leave at the end of year 13 with the equivalent of four A-levels, which is very competitive if what you're then looking to do is either go into the university scene or look to compete in the world of, in the world of work, apprenticeships, and so forth. 
Um, someone asked in the last group, can they do five? Uh, and uh, technically, yes. But what we do is, when we're working with you in year 12, we'll, at enrolment, we'll have a conversation with you about what is the right curriculum. If you were trying to do the equivalent of five A-levels, I'd be looking for you to be carrying a whole load of sevens, eights, and nines with 100% attendance and all that sort of thing. It's hard. It's hard. 20 hours a week, with all that extra independent learning, you're probably looking at something like a 50-hour working week. It's really tough. It's also worth remembering that while things like UALs might not have exams, if they're 100% coursework based, you do an awful lot of work. I mean, have a look when you go around. But the portfolios that these students produce is, is dense. It's a lot of art, art creation that they do during the, during the time of the course. Okay. Entry requirements. Don't get too bogged down on this, please. The last group got really like, and what if we got this? What, just don't worry too much. It's just important that I let you know how it works. If you are coming into year 10, there are no entry requirements. If you are pre-16, you're entitled to a school's place of your choice. The only reason why we wouldn't give you a place if you were coming into year 10 might literally just be because we're already full and therefore we haven't got places to give or courses are maxed out. If you're in year 9 and you want to come here, you basically can come here. We will meet with you. We will have a meeting with every single applicant just to make sure that what you love and what we offer is well aligned, just to make sure that it, it's going to work. Um, but you can come. If you're coming into year 12, if you want to absolutely know you've got your place, then these are the requirements we go with. We ask you to have five GCSEs at level four and above, including English and Maths. If you don't have that, we may still have a curriculum for you. In fact, we really, we really probably will. We don't turn many people away if possible, but we will need to sit with you at enrolment and figure out what is the right course, because some of these courses are really, really taxing and difficult, and if you haven't managed to get the grades in academic or what we call textual analysis subjects like English, you might find doing an A-level quite challenging. But we can usually find a great course for you. The second one, in some ways, is more important, which is we like you to show real talent and expertise in a subject that relates to your choices at sixth form. So if you want to come here and do costume and wardrobe, we like to see that you've got a six or above in art, for example, because that shows that you're going to really take to that subject. So what really matters in some ways, if you want to do set and prop, or you know, if you come to us with a six or a seven in product design, we, we know we're probably onto a winner. Okay. All right. Um, partners. Because I'm very near the end now, everybody, you'll be pleased to know. Um, Partners is a huge important part of what we do, and it's important just to quickly let you know how it works. Um, about 70% of people that currently work in the creative industries actually got their job because of who they know, not necessarily what they know. Okay? Not because, I don't think, from having spoken to a lot of the CEOs of some of these companies, it's not some sort of weird corruption to keep certain people out. Uh, in my experience, it isn't that. It's, it's for good reasons, although it's not okay. The good reasons are because this is a very, very high risk, high cost industry. You're spending thousands of pounds a day if you're filming at one of these big studios. The sound stage alone with all the kit in it that you're hiring and the, and the various expertise on set to work all of that equipment, you're talking tens of thousands of pounds a day uh, that's, that's going on that production. So what they're worried about is if there's a whole lot of people that want to work on set but they don't know how that technology works or they're not on time, or they don't turn up, or they've got a slightly poor attitude to certain types of job, they're, they're burning money, they're wasting time, and they don't want them to. So what they tend to do is go with, like, you know, the, the Dave on camera's nephew or something. They tend to use what they know because they just want to know that, that it's going to be an appropriate person on set. We're trying to challenge that because the industry's not diverse enough and the industry needs more people working for it. So the industry's saying, we've got to get more people into the industry. So what we're trying to do is say we can vouch for them. So we're creating these partnerships so that when Sky or I mean BBC Studio Works is probably a better example, their production liaison officer at Elstree Studios knows what's on, and if they need additional runners or I mean, it happened one time on Celebrity Juice, they didn't have enough makeup artists, they called us up and we sent four down and replacements that way. And what it means is when you're then looking to set up freelance or get into the industry, you're able to say I've worked on this production or I've worked with this person. It kind of improves your little black book. You can see it starting to work because these are the partners and these are some of the destinations that we've got alumni students now working at. So you can see that there's, there is that sort of connection between the partners that we're generating and the opportunities for students. Um, these are some of the higher education um, providers that our students tend to go to. 
What's really interesting about it is, you know, Goldsmiths or Central St. Martins, if you want to be a graphic designer, going to Central St. Martins is like Oxford. Like, it's, it's as good as it gets. So it's not necessarily about did you go to a Russell Group University in the creative industries. It's more about if you went to Ravensbourne, generally speaking, everyone at NFTS and everyone at BBC, not everyone, but you know, lots of people got their practical qualifications at Ravensbourne. So it's more about the credibility of the courses than it is necessarily about the name of the university. Okay, very, very nearly there. Last year, 2021, we became a UK centre for screen excellence, working with BFI and uh, screen skills. Uh, to develop a traineeship. I'm, I'm presenting you with this because, more partners, I'm presenting you with this because university can be a brilliant way into the industry, particularly if you want to become a producer, a director, a director of photography, cinematographer. Generally speaking, you're going to need a degree. Um, if you want to be a professional editor, again, you'll probably need a degree. You may even go on to somewhere like the NFTS to do masters in some of these qualifications. But there are loads of areas within the creative industry where actually they're not particularly, but a degree is not necessarily that helpful. And degrees now costing 40, 50, 60,000 pounds to go and get that degree, if actually what you really want to do is become a professional gaffer or a professional grip, university may not be the best way in. What's brilliant about the traineeship is the traineeship is fully funded, providing you're under 19, so if you're 18 to 19 years old, and you choose to stay here, if you're coming in year 10 now, or you're coming in year 12, think about this as a, not, not just a two or a four year pathway, think about it as a three or a five year. If you're coming in year 10 and you stay with us for five years, you could leave, not just with those four A-level equivalents, but you could also leave with a traineeship and a level four, okay? Which is one level under that foundation degree level, okay? So these are some of the things we offer at post 18, so this is our year 14, 18 to 19 year olds. So we do that's why when you're moving around today, you'll feel that slight more college vibe. Because although you start here at 14, we're, we're a bit of a secondary school, 14 to 16. We're kind of more of an FE college in the sense that we go from that 16 through to 19. It's an adult learning in there as well. So these are some of the courses that you can take, fully funded, so they're free, um, and, and they set you up quite nicely. You can do them as a gap year and move into a, a uni afterwards, some people do, but they're not really designed for that. They're designed to kind of connect you to industry. Um, if it's a traineeship, that comes with nine weeks of placements, so you'll be working either on set or you'll be producing content with real TV film producers. So it's quite in industry uh, in the way that it's delivered. All right, I'm not going to, uh, oh yeah, sorry. Entry requirements. Traineeships don't require entry, they just require a brilliant attitude because you have to be on time and you have to travel to placements, sometimes all over the North London, Greater London region, so um, you have to be really committed to do a traineeship, but they don't have entry requirements. Um, level fours, you have to have a good quality level three if you're going to take a level four. Okay, so that's back to your A levels and level three qualification. All right, um, I'm not going to show you this uh, because it's about six minutes long and I'm slightly overrunning tonight but it is on our website. It's nice to watch it because it's alumni talking to you about their experience of having come here. I really like it because they get to say things that it would be a bit uncool for me to say, like, oh my God, it's so much better than my last school, and things like that, which I'm always delighted to hear, but shouldn't really say out loud, but I, I just did, but only by telling you they said it. I'm not saying it, it's true. Right, um, so do watch that if you, um, if you, if you get some time. Uh, it is on our website. Um, we are um, joining some of our colleagues in the industry. If you've heard of ALBA, it's this big program for the creative industries to massively cut their emissions and become greener. Um, we've, we've, we're really into all of that here. So we don't have these huge, big, awful kind of massive prospectuses that we give out that just end up in, in recycling. Um, it's all online. Now, this is literally the page from our website. You click on prospectus in the top right-hand corner. All of these are links. So go to the subject you're interested in. Click on the subject, the specification will be there, the units that we study will be there, what you can expect to do in the first year and the second year. Some of them even have little links to some of the teachers talking about the subject, so it's quite an interactive way of perusing our prospectus. And then obviously you click admissions and apply if you haven't done so already, and there's the form that you fill in, and then Corin picks you up and takes you on the journey of application. Uh, if you have got any questions, Adele Wallace is also around this evening. Adele Wallace is the Associate Principal of the Academy. 
So we're both here all the time, but I also run the training part, the post 18, and Adele does a lot of the running of the academy, so she can answer any questions you've got. She's located down in reception today, um, just because we've got so many people to get through. I don't really do a and a now, but she can answer all your questions, and I finish at half seven, and the night doesn't shut till eight, so I will be around for half an hour at the end if you really want to speak to me. Our SENCO and those sorts of people are also around this evening, so if you've got any specific questions about inclusion or our differentiated provision, please ask them. Thank you so much for coming, and I hope we see a lot of you in September. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you.